Josh, when you look back on this season, um, what's going to be your, I guess, maybe your favorite memory from the year? And that's a great question. I don't think I'm quite ready to look at it from 10,000 feet yet. Um, you know, we're still trying to recover from what happened in the NCAA tournament and the what ifs. Um, but certainly at some point we'll reflect uh, with, uh, I'm assuming, a lot of fondness for uh, the season we had. Uh, certainly there were ups and downs along the way, but in the end, um, you know, we had a historic season overall. I think that, you know, after the two seasons you guys have had here, 58 wins, I think all of us are kind of expecting there to be some interest from other programs. I mean, if that does come, if it fits right, would there be some interest reciprocated by you? You know, um, I think that's a type of situation you just cross that bridge when you get there. Um, I don't think too much about that. Um, you know, I have an agent, obviously, that handles any inquiries, et cetera. And, um, you know, again, it's just one of those deals in life that um, you just deal with uh, when it's presented to you. I think that you know, a lot of people, like, you've done, you've done a good enough job to get that, that type of interest, I guess. So, like, what do, you, what do you see New Mexico State, the New Mexico State job as? Like, some people may see it as a stepping stone, I think. Mario has done, you know, got some uh, ways to kind of increase some retention there. Like, how would you evaluate the job as it sits right now in, in your chair? You know, I'm not smart enough to look at it that way. I just try to do my job on a daily basis. Um, I was very fortunate when, when Mario and, and the New Mexico State Brass uh, uh, offered me the job, and I was thrilled um, to be the head coach here, and I'm I've continued to be excited um, to be the head coach here. I mean, um, but I just don't look at things like that. I mean, it's, I try to do my job, and I try to get my staff to do their job, and, and then it just trickles down to everybody in the program. And, you know, all that is, is to me is a distraction when you let your mind wander like that, and uh, I don't think anything good can, can happen from it. Um, I love being here. I love being the head coach at New Mexico State. Uh, it means a lot to me. Um, I treat it with um, the utmost care and diligence, as does our staff and, and our whole program. And um, my wife and I love living in the community of Las Cruces. Um, they've treated us so well, and we've made a lot of friends. And um, we fully expect to, to be uh, at New Mexico State for a long, long time. And we're appreciative of what Mario um, has spearheaded in terms of being proactive in, in trying to increase um, the package, and that makes you feel good. It makes you feel wanted, and especially how he's went about doing it in terms of, you know, doing it, not waiting till after the WAC tournament to see how we fare. It'd be real easy to do that, and in both years, you know, he's got ahead of the curve, and, and it's a little bit of a wow, you know, for, for us when, when we leave the conversation because it's like, you know, he doesn't have to do that. And uh, certainly, you know, it makes it nice when we win the WAC tournament, and, and it makes it, I think, better for everybody, obviously. But, um I just don't get caught up in that, um, and, and I just try to stay focused on, on the task at hand. Does that kind of commitment and proactiveness, does that, will, that, will you weigh that when and if that? that absolutely, happens? absolutely. You know, um, I got coaches smarter than me have always told me, you know, coach where you're loved, you know, uh, be where, where people appreciate you, and um, I definitely feel that. I mean, from the community, from, from all the outpouring of text and, and social media hits and um, just how, how they make you feel wanted is important. Um, certainly there's other factors, you know, with, with uh, decisions that you have to make in your life, but um, coaching where, where you're appreciated and being at a place that uh, loves basketball as much as we do, and, and there's so many people that care about this basketball program makes it uh, more fun. And, um, you know, I've, I've been at places where it wasn't necessarily the case. And, and, you know, that's not my style. I want to be somewhere where the games matter and the seasons matter. And, and they do here. Um, it's important to our fan base that we win. Uh, we're certainly disappointed we couldn't break through that barrier that's uh, been put up for a long, long time, for decades. And I felt like, you know, we were the team to, to bust through it. And unfortunately, we weren't. But um, even after that loss, I mean, the amount of people that have reached out to us um, directly or indirectly about how they feel about what we're doing, the job we're doing, makes you feel good. And then when your administration and your brass are, are talking to you about 
um, different things that they are willing to do to, to keep you happy and keep you here, it's definitely um, a big deal for, for Sherry and I. Coach, can you talk about how a senior-dominated group coming back next year could weigh on your decision? <clears throat> you know, I don't have a decision to make. Um, I'm, I'm the head coach at New Mexico State right now, and, and like I said earlier, I, I plan on being the head coach at New Mexico State for a long, long time. I mean, obviously we can win here and win big, and that's important to me. Uh, I'm, I'm somewhat miserable uh, when we're losing, and uh, I don't think anyone around me you know, necessarily wants that. So... Um, you know, I don't, I don't have to make that decision because I don't have a decision to make right now. But um, I'm excited uh, about next year. Uh, I haven't gotten my head around it yet to, you know, worrying about it. We're on spring break right now, which is a perfect timing for all of us, players and coaches, to kind of um, get away from one another and, and kind of put ourselves back together emotionally. And then, uh, you know, by next Monday, you know, once, once we get back from spring break, you know, we'll have a team meeting and, and figure out where we go from there. It's still early, but do you have any top priorities for next season? Any areas where you want to work? Yeah, you know, um, there's a lot of meetings that have to be had, you know, all across the country, and we're no different. You've got to see where we are individually as players um, and where they see themselves fitting in in the future of our program, both from them and from us. So, um, you know, it's hard to say in terms of, of adding or subtracting to our roster, but, you know, we've been recruiting all year long. You know, uh, that's that's a a belief that we have um, as coaches that you always have to be prepared. Um, but if I had to choose one thing where we need to improve as, as a team, we just got to get bigger and not necessarily at the five spot. When people say, you know, you got to get bigger, they think, you know, you need a seven footer. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just getting bigger at the guard and the forward spots. So, you know, guys can't shoot over us and guys can't outsize us. And, and we work really, really hard on defense and rebounding. And, and, you know, our rebounding numbers are off the chart. I mean, I just checked before I walked down here. Right now in Ken Palm, we're second in the country defensive rebounding, which is absurd. Um, and then in the offensive category, we're seventh. Um, but we're not very big. And, you know, it's tantalizing to think about how good we could be if we had more size and we're a little more athletic. And so that would be the one area where we'd focus on uh, to directly help our team in recruiting is just to try to get bigger uh, along the guard and the forward spot so we can match up with some of these bigger guards and wings that we play against, um, even in the WAC. I mean, certainly in, in against the Power 5 teams, when we play those teams in the tournaments or a regular season game and, and certainly in postseason. But even in the WAC, sometimes we feel like uh, we're getting outsized out front and we'd like to uh, correct that if possible. I asked you a couple weeks ago if you think because of a lot of different factors that this year's job that you did and your staff did was better than last year in some ways. I don't know if you've been able to think about that since the season ended here. Man, I don't know. I mean, I let other people critique me or um, tell me if I did a good job or not. And we're just trying to win championships. We're trying to make our players better. We're trying to make them better people. And I do know that for a fact that uh, our kids have grown, you know, and the older you get, the more uh, I love that part of the job, being able to uh, positively impact um, these young men to try to get them to, to understand what's out there and, and you know, what life uh, could or couldn't, you know, um, bring to them. And um, I know we're growing as individuals and we're growing as a program. And, um, you know, I think when I first got here, people asked, you know, what's your style and how are you going to play and, you know, and, um, we're not a, a logo team, you know. We're not a big hashtag team. Um, we, we try to just let our play um, serve as our hashtag or our motto. And I think at this point, you know, after the two years that we've had, that people know what we stand for. People know, you know, how we play and 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 how hard our guys work. And 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 that's that's what we want. I mean, that that's the goal. And you know, I, I think we're we're on our way that way. But in terms of you know trying to compare years, I mean, it's different. You know, I'm proud of the fact that we did it in different styles. You know, last year we were more of a defensive-oriented team, member-wise. Um, this year right now in Ken Palm, our offense is 35th in the country. You know, I think we're 83rd defensively, and so we still are about defense and rebounding and toughness. But at the same time, you know, as a staff, we improved um, well enough and put our players in a better position where we got better offensively, and that was kind of the goal in the offseason was to get better offensively, um, to – to have better spacing, to run better stuff, to put those players in better positions, and I thought we accomplished that. Can you give a, as we sit here today, like how many scholarships 
that open. I know the three guys are graduating, but are, are guys going to slide into those spots? Are you going to fill those with new players? I mean, yeah, it's a great question, and I'm not trying to be coy, but um, I don't have the answer to it right now. You know, we'll have individual meetings um, early next week and, and see where everybody sits after being able to get away from it and kind of take a deep breath. Um, and you just never know what those meetings will produce. You know, you, you know, guys aren't going to talk about that during the season, but when the season's over, you know, some of them may be disappointed in their playing time. Um, same, some may look at the roster going, okay, I'm behind this guy. How am I going to get ahead of him, et cetera. And, you know, we'll have open-ended meetings. Um, you know, by the middle of next week, you know, I'll have a better idea, you know, where we sit uh, in terms of, uh, of how many scholarships we have at our, at our disposal. Do you see next year kind of being a similar type deal for you guys, just, just the kind of all hands on deck type of thing? Or do you, do you see it maybe being a more of a, like last year where you have two guys that step up a little bit more? I don't know. You know, again, that, that won't be determined till fall. Um, you know, we'll see what our roster looks like uh, when we head into uh, the summer, when they come back for our, um, you know, summer school session and we get back uh, on the court. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, I certainly uh, enjoyed this year in terms of, of coaching a team with that much depth. But at the same time, it, it um, has some negative impact uh, at, as well. But, um, you know, we're going we're gonna, to um, coach the team to the best of our ability uh, once we figure out, you know, who's on our team and, and once we get to know them in the summer and the fall. But in terms of who we play, how we play and all that, I mean, that's determined uh, way later. But at the same time, you know, our, our culture and our core is going to continue to be what it is. Um, you know, the one thing someone pointed out to me this weekend is, you know, our average number of wins is, is more than the school record, you know, and, and I think that's something to be proud of. You know, we're averaging 29 wins a season, albeit only in two seasons, but that's more than the, the school record is for one season. And so uh, I think we're uh, doing things the right way and, and, and we're heading in the right direction. And, um, you know, to think about next year that way is, is hard just because there's so much time and work that's involved to, to winning like that. And um, it's just disappointing right now knowing, you know, the what if, you know, you can, that, that's a game you can replay in your head so many times. And, you know, a, a shot here, a free throw there, a call here, a call there. And, you know, we're playing Kansas for the right to go to the Sweet 16. And so it's going to take a long time to um, get over that and put ourselves back together. Um, certainly, I understand the questions about next year and, and rightfully so. But, um, you know, we're just not ready to go there yet mentally. You mentioned the game. I mean, I know you're you're stinging from the, the Auburn loss, but did you watch the Kansas Auburn game? And did that did that make it hard, a little harder? Um, I never watched any full games since we got beat. You know, if it was on at home or out and about having dinner, etc. Um, you know, I'd watch five ten minutes here or there, um, but it's just it's just no fun watching the games now. You know, I mean, it just brings back. Um, you know, memories um, quickly. Um, but, you know, that's okay. I mean, that's just the way it goes. And um, But at the same time, um, you know, you can look at it two ways. You can look at it like, oh, man, that could have been us, you know. And um, But it doesn't do you any good. I mean, it, it doesn't change the outcome of our game. It's not, you know, there's no do-overs. We're not going to get to replay that game um, again. And, um, you know, um, certainly thought we'd we, – we, we would be very confident, you know, going into the Kansas game if we were to win the Auburn game just because of having played them and how that game turned out. But um, we just didn't we didn't get it done. Any other questions for Coach? Coach, after two full seasons with all the triumphs and the heartbreaks, what does it mean to you to be the coach of the New Mexico State Aggies? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be the coach of this storied program. Uh, it means a lot to me. Um, you know, we, we want the community to be proud of our style of play, and I think our kids and the way they go about competing uh, in a blue-collar uh, type of way resonates with them. Um, you know, we're not a, a fancy team. It's, it's, you know, it's not that hard to know what we're about, and we try to leave everything on the floor and compete at the highest level, uh, game in and game out, and, and we try to do it with class, I and mean, we try to do it in a first-class manner, and, um, you know, I think for the most part, um, our, our kids uh, are fine representatives uh, of our program, of our athletic program, of our university, of our community. And that means a lot to me and our staff. Um, and um, I just see no reason why I won't continue in the future.